that day we actually, it was like, of all of the kids at this project, she was the one that I just, I would have stuffed in my bag to take home if I could have. Um, but she had a mom, so she They frown upon that. Yeah, for they don't let you do that. But um, we got to go to her house for the visit. They take you on home visits to let you see. So in a family where a child is sponsored, this is what their life is like compared to a family that has no help. Um, and uh, she lived with her mom, her grandma, and maybe four other kids in, like, uh, it might have been a three-bedroom, which is kind of rare, just separated by some walls, but most of them slept on the floor. Um, they don't have even a mattress most of them sleep on. Um, it was pretty, you know, pretty much mud floors and walls. And, um, but that little girl, it was one of those things where her, her mother just, you could tell that she had really been affected by the project. And, and, and I think she was like 17 when she I mean, had the baby. The, the mother was so young in and of herself. So the, the little help that she could get from anyone was a big deal. And they, um, I think the thing that just hit us the most was, was the constant thank yous, you know? And so as a band, when we play a concert in the States or wherever we play, we have a compassion talk and we just tell people for this amount of money, this is what you can do. And Melissa tries to share, you know, I have two sponsor kids. This is what's changed their life. And um, these people, to them, we were the ones helping them. And, you know, they have sponsor people in different we states. All the they may not know who their sponsor person really is. They're so young. But, but to them, we were from the states and we were the people who were making sure. And in a family that's, that has a sponsor kid, they, most of them can eat and they have a well-rounded meal. And if, if somebody in the family has AIDS or malaria, compassion comes in and they have people who um, sponsor for, for sicknesses and they make sure that the, the child or parent with AIDS has the right medication and vitamins and the right food. They take them rice and the right fruits and vegetables. And um, it was amazing to see that compassion has thought of everything, literally. And that in a country where you, know, you could contract a disease in so many ways and so many of these babies have contracted it, from the breast milk of their mothers, which is so sad because the mothers have no idea that they're passing it on and sometimes don't know they have it. Um, it's a really hopeless place, but these people with a little bit, they grab onto it and they have dreams. And the kids we met were like, I will be a doctor one day. And I was like, oh, I mean, don't like start with like, I'll be a, a hairdresser or anything that takes like a year, but no, they're gonna be doctors and lawyers and nurses and they want to stay in Uganda and make it a better place. They don't want to escape to the States or anywhere else. They love where they live and they want to make it a better place. And they literally, they were just beautiful people. And with a little bit that we give, they were so thankful, so appreciative and, and so humble about what they have. And if you would ask the mothers, what do you want us to pray for for your family? She would say, I've never, I've never thought about that. Because to her, she just hopes that they live beyond the next few years, and that maybe her husband doesn't contract a disease and die and leave her as a single mom, which so many moms are there, or that her kids don't get kidnapped because it's a dangerous place to live and, and uh, awful things happen when they're taken. So literally their dreams are so small compared to what I think in most countries we have, and, um, and by working with compassion we give hope, otherwise they would feel stuck in a really hopeless situation. So you travel around in your band, you sell CDs, you do big concerts, you go to a place like Uganda, how did it affect you? How did it change you when you came back in, into America? I think, uh, I mean, and like I said, I experienced different things each time I came back, but um, you come back and you kind of don't know what to do at first, honestly, because, I mean, we are very fortunate. Like, we were, we are giving, given a lot of opportunities that in some countries they just don't have, you know? And and so you sit there and you're like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, do I sell everything I have and live with nothing or, or what do I do? But I think for me, the biggest thing, what what I've done through the whole process of it um, is that it's not, it's not that I'm supposed to give up everything or whatever because God has, he has blessed me greatly with where I live and my family and all of that but it's to take those resources and then share it with other people. And so, I honestly, that's, I think how it's changed even what we do is that now when I go and talk about compassion to anyone, it's not just because, you know, I read this piece of paper and it says these statistics. It's because I've held babies 
it's because I've had conversations with these people that have been affected um, from a sponsorship program. It's because I've seen a before and an after, you know, and I believe um, passionately about what they're doing and um, compassionate enough themselves. They're such a, an upstanding organization. There's nothing hidden from you at all. All everything that you ever want to know about the organization, where the money goes, their, you know, their taxes, all the stuff. It's out there for you to, to look at, to see, to question, because they just believe in, in children and helping the world, saving them from poverty one, one child at a time. And that's, I mean, I think that's how it's, it's changed me, is it's made me realize and have a bigger idea of the world out there and that there's so much more outside of my little bubble, you know. And when people say to me all the time, people are always like, we hear a lot, they're like, well, what could I be doing for the world? How could I change the world? Even kids. It's like, you know, most of the people at our shows are teenagers. It's like, what could I be doing? How could I change the world? And, and I remember one year, this girl came up and she was like, you know, me and my friend, we would love to sponsor, but we just, we don't have the money right now. So, you know, we're going to get a job and we're going to make it happen. I saw her a year later. They had both gotten jobs. They had both gotten a child to sponsor and they had been sponsoring then, since then, sponsoring a child. And she was like, it's been amazing. It's been a blessing and it's been awesome. And so it's like, don't think that you can't do something because it is possible. It really is possible to make it happen. If you really want to, to make a difference and, and affect the world around you, you can affect places very far away with just a very little. If you think about it, it's like, um, I know in the States, like a Starbucks coffee is like $5 pretty much, you know? It's ridiculous. So it's me drinking six less coffees in a month and I can feed a child. And and, and the difference is their family learns that when these people, these strange people are coming to bring them food and make sure they're okay, that they're coming from the church. It's all, it all has to do with the local church. And so they're seeing the love of God in very tangible ways, which is what I believe we're meant to do. So sponsoring a child is one way to support compassion. Maybe going on a trip like you girls did. Is there any other ways you can support compassion? There are. I was actually thinking when you were talking for younger people that might want to do something, you know, and um, maybe you don't have a lot of money, maybe you can't commit to anything monthly. Um, we've met some young people that get their friends together, they do sort of a fundraiser. Um, a, uh, a mosquito net is about $10. It's five, and that, actually. Is it five? Five. Five dollars. So that can actually, a whole family could sleep under that and it could prevent all the family from ending up with malaria, which a lot of them die from um, as simple as a mosquito bite so it's kind of a fun thing you know you could you could just raise as much money as you can thirty dollars six families can be you know healthy and safe within their sleep so it's um actually when we went to gift's house they had she had a mosquito net just over her cute little bed i think it was pink or something but um yeah. but i could tell that when her mom put her in there it was kind of this sigh of relief you know just a when she sleeps at night, I don't have to worry that she might wake up sick. So um, there are little ways that you can go on their websites, and there are little ways to give and feel like I'm making a difference. I can't maybe afford thirty dollars a month or commit to that, but you can you can also do one time donations. And if say something good, God blesses you, and you're like I want to give a hundred dollars of this, compassion will take it, and you can tell them where you want it to go, and and it will help in some way.